expecting child they search the inn to find a place for you are coming soon there was no room for them to stay so in a manger filled with hay God's only son was born oh hallelujah hallelujah Have no fear. Behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which shall be for all people. God has visited us. Day has dawned upon us. For unto us a child is born, who is Christ the Lord. Welcome to St. Peter's United Church of Christ on this Christmas Eve. In case you haven't had a chance to catch the explanation in the bulletin, it's true that worship looks a little different this evening for those in the sanctuary. As the pandemic has caused so many of us to make adjustments to our everyday routines, we want to offer the best worship experience possible. At the same time, our program staff here at St. Peter's want to follow current public health guidelines, and we want to do what we can to safeguard their health as well as that of their households. We also want to limit as much as possible the likelihood of our staff unintentionally 
spreading COVID. And so we have prepared the presentation of worship remotely. We hope it meets your needs as we all strive to show patience with the changes brought on by this unique time. Again, welcome and Merry Christmas. please stand and join responsively to the call of worship. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill towards all. For out of God's own being, Jesus has come to bring love and light to all people. Jesus is our Emmanuel, God with us, come to gather our tears and laughter, our work and play into God's love. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill towards all. God loves this world of flesh and blood, stone and tree, sheep and oxen, star and field. God loves the world so much that God comes to us in Jesus. Yet we are careless with God's creation. Let us confess our sin together. How amazing is your love, great God. You are not distant from us in some faraway heaven. You have come close to us in a child born of simple parents and cradled in a borrowed bed of straw. We confess we abuse this created world. When we stand by while the earth is despoiled and its destruction threatened, God forgive. When we inflict physical or emotional pain on those with whom we share our lives, God forgive. When we abuse or neglect our own bodies, God 
forgive. By your great love, God, draw us into new ways of living. Teach us to cherish and nurture life in this fragile world in the manner of Jesus the Christ, whose birth we celebrate tonight. Amen. Hear the good news. In compassion, God forgives us, enabling us to turn from the ways of violence and death. God, show us how to choose and cherish life. I say to you in the name of Jesus, our sins are forgiven. and We can rejoice and celebrate. And at this time, I invite you to rise in place and greet one another with a wave or a smile or a wish of Merry Christmas as we pass the peace in a socially distant fashion. And now we hear from Mary Beth Woods, who offers us our first scripture reading this night. Our first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 1 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged a nation, increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing in plunder. For the, as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke of the burden that burdened them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire." For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Reach on. 
And now a word for what we would like to do this evening from the 96th Psalm. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. And now I invite you to join with me responsibly in the lighting of the central candle of the Advent wreath. It is finally here. It is the time of sacred passage, of a light coming into the world. The moment presses forward. The weight of longed-for grace bears down upon a weary world. We know that the whole creation has been groaning together in labor pains until now. It is the time when we will count tiny fingers and toes and say, how beautiful are the feet of this little messenger who brings such an overwhelming sense of awe and of peace. Let us open ourselves to deep mystery of God's love made flesh and let it come. May Christ be born again among us. Let us pray together. God of all creation, spark of life in every birth, and midwife of the new selves we may become, we gather seeking light and warmth. We come giving thanks in the face of all our grief and regrets for the one who came by water and blood. Light our hearts like lamps in this hour, that we may become beacons of your love. For we pray in the strong name of the one born of Mary, holy child of the living God, Jesus Christ. Amen.
And now back to Mary Beth Woods, who will share another word from Scripture this night. Titus, chapter 2, verse 11 through 14. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. as we celebrate this promise of Emmanuel, of God with us. We know that that means in God's love, we are always welcome to come before our Creator and share all in our hearts and minds, all going on in our lives, in our household, in our community, and in our world. And so let us now take the time and enter into prayer. O oh, gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for your promise to be with us this night. Whether we are here or far, whether we are gathered or scattered, we continue to trust that you hear all our prayers, whether they are spoken or unspoken. loving God. We thank you that you have come into our lives and that you act with saving power to make all things new. We thank you for pouring out your life into the human form of Jesus and for the continual rebirth of Christ in the human heart. Touched by your word made flesh, we would embody, incarnate, and signify your love on this earth. May the joy of Christmas never end, but continue through the ages until at last your reign of justice and peace is fully established on this earth. We pray as followers of Jesus the Word who also taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Although on this night we celebrate the first night of Jesus' earthly life, that night on which he was born, 
we also remember that last night of his earthly life, that night on which he was betrayed, arrested, and sent to trial and execution. And we remember from the Christmas story that the one for whom there was no room at the inn welcomes us all to Christ's table even now. And so we do remember on that night so many years ago that as the grown-up Jesus gathered with his disciples around the table for supper, Jesus took bread. He blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, also after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. O ever-present God, God of every moment, God of every season, God of all eternity, We give you thanks and praise for all that you have done and all that you continue to do. And so we thank you, and yet we ask you this night that you would make good on your promise of presence everywhere. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon these elements of bread and of cup, and upon all elements of bread and of cup we may be using to share in this sacrament. But we ask further that you send your Holy Spirit upon us as well, upon our hearts and upon our minds, that by partaking at your table, we may be better servants of your will and we may find your peace and your joy, not just this night, but all nights and all days, forever after. We make this prayer as followers of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we take part in the new life which Christ gives. All things are now ready, and so I invite you to make sure you have your elements ready to partake. The body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. The cup of the new covenant, the cup of new life, take and drink. Let us rise and give thanks. O God, who is eternal salvation and inestimable blessedness, grant to all your servants, we pray you, that we who have received things holy and blessed may be enabled to be holy and blessed evermore. Amen. And now I invite you to hear these words from the second chapter of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, according to Luke. In those days, 
a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And now, to hear more from the second chapter of Luke's Gospel, here is Mary Beth Woods yet again. From Luke chapter 2, verse 15 through 20. When the angels had left then and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they have been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This ends the reading.
one of the many traditions many of us treasure at Christmas is that of the classic Christmas movie. I bet many of us have pretty regular annual practices of watching It's a Wonderful Life, or A Christmas Story, or even National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. One of the big ones in our house was a version of that literary staple, A Christmas Carol, by Charles Dickens. But another Charles contributes to our Christmas traditions, Charles Schultz. Or maybe we can identify this Charles better by the name of the main character in his stories, Charlie Brown. Now you may have heard uh, there was controversy over the Charlie Brown holiday specials this year. Back in October, the great Pumpkin did not air on broadcast television for the first time in several decades. Instead, it aired on a streaming service, as was the plan for Thanksgiving and Christmas. But there was such an uproar, the corporate bigwigs relented, and PBS picked it up. Now, I was quite happy about that because, for one thing, I believe that positive, collective, national rituals are essential in the current environment. This year's Charlie Brown affair reminds me of an important insight shared from an actual devotional based on a Charlie Brown Christmas. One I may have shared before, but remains important to hear again, especially this year. The observation made by that devotional writer involves not Charlie Brown, but Chuck's good friend, Linus. Remember Linus? He's Charlie Brown's good buddy and he's most easily identifiable by the blanket onto which he constantly clutches. His identity has become interwoven with his security blanket. He never leaves home without it, and in all the cartoons, you never see him without his blanket in his hand. Well, that's not completely true. Almost never. And here's where that devotional's observation comes in. Part of the storyline of the Christmas special surrounds preparation for a traditional Christmas pageant. And Linus gets to read some essential lines in Luke's version of the Nativity, which we heard tonight. As Linus reads the famous story of the second chapter of Luke's Gospel, and here's where you really have to pay attention if you're watching. Linus drops his blanket. But more than that, he releases this symbol of security at a key moment. He lets go right when he reads the opening words of the angel to the shepherds. Fear not. Surely, that's no accident. Fear not. Or as the New Revised Standard Version renders it, Do not be afraid. The same thing an angel told John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, just a chapter earlier. Fear not. The same thing said to Mary when an angel visited her. Fear 
not. The same thing Jesus said when he called the first disciples. Fear not. Over in Matthew's Gospel, it's the same thing the angel says to the women who have come to find the empty tomb early on Easter morning. Fear not. Fearing not sounds like it might be kind of an important instruction in the gospel stories, repeated so many times, including at Christmas and Easter themselves. Why would that be, I wonder? I think it might have something to do with the idea that an authentic Christian faith, a faith in a sovereign God of the universe whose central character is love, a faith that calls forth discipleship, a faith that means following the one who showed us that God's love made manifest in the world means giving everything in the cause of God's justice, a faith that bears good fruit. This kind of faith stands in opposition to those voices that seek to make us afraid of the wrong things. You see, fear of others, fear of those unlike us, fear of messages we don't like to hear, that fear gets used as a tool of those with earthly power. Fear gets in the way of love. Check 1 John 4.18 on that explicitly. Fear is a form of idolatry in that it claims power reserved for only a sovereign God. Fear is how the Roman Empire ruled with its constant conquest, warfare, and military might. To fear not is to refuse to bow to false gods and distractions and security blankets. But there are those who have power, those who make their voice heard, who urge us to live our lives afraid of what they tell us we should fear. They tell us to fear those seeking help because of from where they come. They tell us to fear our neighbors, letting society show how their lives don't matter. They tell us to fear strangers, insisting they are all just others. The urgency to risk loving sounds like a threat in this culture. The God of our Christian faith calls us to and equips us for a higher standard. Scripture tells us to love both our neighbors and our enemies. When voices warn us to be afraid of those of another religion, denying them help they need, we must respond with fear not. When voices warn us to be afraid of those who look different, denying them basic respect and dignity, we must respond with fear not not. When voices warn us we need more weapons, more security blankets to feel safe, we must respond with fear not. When voices warn us that we can't trust science, that scientists want to wreck our economy, we must respond with fear not.
when Linus dropped his security blanket at the angel's words of fear not. The angel in the story explains why not. As Linus reminds us from the words of the Gospel of Luke, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. That's the kind of good news Christians are called to proclaim in word and deed. Good news for everyone. We are to be not afraid, for this good news is for all people, not for just us. And that makes it even better news. News that, if taken seriously, might even lead us to drop our own blankets, allowing our hands to work for the well-being of others. Everyone, please stand and join responsibly in the benediction. Glory to God in the highest. Jesus is born. God has come to us and shared our common lot. And so we rejoice. Go forth rejoicing in the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.